Why do you think so few people care about consistency and getting to what's really true? We've gotten to the point where most people can reach a life expectancy of 80 or more through just drifting and not taking truth or ideas seriously. I mean, that is a great question and, and really the core of everything because if people are not interested in thinking, if people are not truth seekers, if people are not looking for consistency, for truth, for, for values, for knowledge, then it really is hopeless. It really is a, a massive challenge. And why don't they? Well, some of that is because we live in a culture in which we're told. Well, there is no truth. That is your truth and my truth, somebody else's truth. There is no objective knowledge. I mean, we're at a point where academics at universities, people who teach our kids, are telling us that 2 point plus 2 might not be 4. Actually, isn't 4. Actually, if you think 2 plus 2 equals 4, you're a racist because that's white math. That's insane. I think people who are seeking truth are often accused of being simplistic, often accused of not being sophisticated, of not being part of the elite. And are intimidated into not thinking. I think this is what happens with a lot of smart kids in school who are ridiculed for being smart, who are ridiculed for being good students. And unfortunately, lose the motivation to do it. So it is a... It goes back to the fundamental choice that we have as human beings. The fundamental choice, the choice that is related to free will, because this is the fundamental sense in which we have free will. We choose to think or not to think, to focus on reality or not to focus on reality, to pursue truth or not to pursue truth. That's the fundamental. That's what it's about. And some people never choose it. Some people choose to pursue it and then are discouraged. Some people choose to pursue it and then are confused by the, by the nonsense, nonsense that passes for education and, and, and culture and learning today. So... Over and over and over again, we get this disincentive to pursue the truth. So one of the things that incumbent on us as objectivists, as, as, as advocates for the truth, as ab advocates for objective knowledge, as advocates for knowledge, and is to make it worth, to make it clear why it's worthwhile living to be 80 in focus, living to be 80 pursuing values, living to be 80 pursuing the truth. So one of the things that we must do is not just fight for the truth, but fight for the idea that truth is efficacious. The thinking leads to happiness. Thinking leads to success. Reason is a cardinal value. And that that leads to success in life. I mean, I, I say this often, but it's always worth repeating. To 80-year-olds, it's only one life. You only live once. And the only way to live it true, the only way to live it proper, the only way to live it well, the only way to live it happily is to use your mind. There is nothing else. There is nothing else. To just fight the left, it gets you nowhere, because what are you fighting for? So you have got to, we have got to find ways to convince people, to convince people that using their mind is good for them. 
is the ultimate good for them. It's the ultimate value for them. And for them to be successful at living, that's what they need to do. There's nothing, there is nothing else. Politics is way downstream from these kind of ideas. These are the ideas that change the culture. These are the ideas that matter. Politics is what results from the ideas that exist in a culture, the ideas that dominate a culture, the ideas that shape a culture. Our job is to shape the culture through ideas. Let's get those ideas out there and show people the benefit, the value of thinking. That's basically our mission. Results are not measured in politics. See, this is the problem. You're too dominated by collectivism. Results are not measured by politics. Results are measured by individual happiness. Results are measured by your achievement of values. Results are measured by what you do with your life. Not by what our politicians do. I am not here primarily to change the politics. I don't measure my success by changing the politics. That would be absurd and bizarre. The politics are changing for the worst, much worse. The point of objectivism is not to change the political system. The point of objectivism is to change your life. The point of objectivism is for you to be able to achieve happiness. And if we get enough people, enough people, focusing on their own happiness, focusing on their own life, focusing on their own achievement, focusing on success in their life, in their life, then the politics will take care of themselves. So our battle is a cultural battle. Our battle is to be in the culture and to affect the culture by being good artists, by being good businessmen, by being good teachers, educators, by being good intellectuals. Our job is to be in the culture and shape it by being good people by being advocates of good ideas. So, go out there and do your work. <laughs> if, if you want to change the world, it's up to you. Because you're where the culture is. And you can impact the culture around you. And if you have thousands of people doing that, change happens. Change happens. It's how every intellectual change actually happened. You get a philosopher, and then you got to get it into the culture by a variety of different means. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. 
it's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at yourunbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs>